You can also find a lot of prophecies about Muhammad from other Bible prophets like Solomon, Abraham, Isaiah, Daniel, Moses, Habakkuk, Jacob, and many others. Genesis 21, 17-21 God is talking to Hajar. Hajar is the mother of Ishmael. Ishmael is the great-grandfather of Muhammad. God is telling her, I will make Ishmael into a great nation. Muhammad is the only prophet from the descendants of Ishmael. All other prophets are the descendants of Israel. God is telling Hajar about the great nation of the Muslims that will come from Ishmael. Also from these verses we understand that the place where Hajar raised Ishmael was called Paran, which we call now Bakka or Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Remember this name Paran because we will need it later. Paran equal Bakka equal Mecca. Deuteronomy 33 2. He shone forth from Mount Paran and he came with 10,000 saints. We already established before that Paran is Bakka and is Mecca. He is referring to Mecca being filled with thousands of saints and that happened only after Prophet Muhammad delivered God's message to them. Before Muhammad, people of Paran were just idol worshippers. Habakkuk 3.3 3. God came from Timan, the Holy One from Mount Paran, Sila, his glory covered the heavens and his praise filled the earth. This is Prophet Habakkuk referring to Prophet Muhammad coming from Mount Paran, which is Mecca, and then his glory will fill the earth from where? From a place called Sila. Where is Sila? If we check Google Maps, we will find Mount Sila in Medina, Saudi Arabia, right next to the Muhammad's great mosque. This is exactly the life story of Muhammad. He started his journey from Mecca, then migrated to Medina, where finally his glory started spreading all over earth. Now going back to Ishmael, the great-grandfather of Muhammad, we need to know what was the name of the son of Ishmael. 1 Chronicles 1.19 The firstborn of Ishmael was Nabayoth, then Kedar, Abdil, Bissam. Remember the name Kedar, because a lot of prophets will refer to Arabs of Mecca as the descendants of Kedar. Isaiah 42 In the first verse, he's saying that God will choose a new servant, he will put his spirit on him, and he will be a prophet. He will bring justice to all nations. Number 10 Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the ends of the earth. He will sing to the Lord a new song all over earth. If you live near a mosque, you will hear this song five times every day. Allahu Akbar. Number 11. Let the settlements of Kedar lives rejoice. Where are the settlements of Kedar? We already established it is Mecca. Let the people of Sela sing of joy. Going back to Google Maps, Sela is in Medina. Let them shout out of the mountains. Do you know that Muslims every year are shouting out praising Allah from Mount Arafat and Mina in the season of pilgrimage? It is describing exactly what happened and what is still happening right now. This is one of the clearest prophecies of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Bible. In Isaiah 42, the chapter starts by saying that a very special person will be sent to bring justice to the nations. Then the chapter continues and says, Let the settlements where Kedar lives rejoice, let the people of Sela sing for joy, let them shout from the mountaintops. These verses clearly give us a location where this person will be sent, and that is A, the settlements where Kedar lives, and B, in a place called Sela. By checking any Bible dictionary, we can see that Kedar was the second son of Ishmael, and he lived in northwest Arabia which is the region of modern-day Saudi, where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. If that's not enough, then even the lineage of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, can be traced back to Ishmael directly through Kedar. Now, what about Sela? Guys, using Google Maps, we can see that Mount Sela is literally in the city of Medina, where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, established Islam. It honestly gets better. The chapter in Isaiah continues and says that the Lord will march out like a champion and will triumph over his enemies. Now, if you look into the biography of the prophet, you'll see he was attacked over and over again during his prophethood, and he triumphed over every single one of them. And finally, Isaiah 42 then says, But those who trust in idols and say to images, You are our gods, will be turned back in utter shame. 
In other words, this person is to be sent to a pagan society that worships idols, which summarizes perfectly pre-Islamic Arabia. As you can see guys, this is undeniable evidence. There is no other man that fits this description other than the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And in fact, this passage in Isaiah is the reason why there were so many Jews in Arabia at the time. They had no reason to be there, yet they moved there because their scholars knew that a new prophet was to be sent to that location. And when that prophet went to Medina, a lot of them converted to Islam. Isaiah 16. This verse describes the transfer of God's holy land, Zion, from Jerusalem to Mecca. After the darkness of ignorance fills the world, a new prophet from the Gentiles will appear and fill the world with his light. Gentiles are people outside the nation of children of Israel. And Muhammad is the only prophet who is not from the children of Israel. Check this verse from the Quran saying the same thing. It is he who sent among the Gentiles messenger from among themselves, reading his signs to them and purifying them and teaching them the scripture and wisdom, although they were indeed in evident misguidance before that. Going back to number 7, flocks of Kedar referring to the Arabs of Mecca and rams of Nabios referring to the sacrificed animals of the Arabs that are until now sacrificed every year in Mecca in the season of Hajj or pilgrimage. Genesis 49.10 The scripture shall not depart from Judah nor the lawgiver between his feet until Shiloh comes and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. This is Jacob, or Israel, saying to his children that the scripture and prophethood will stay in the family of Israel until Shiloh comes. Then the prophethood will be transferred from the children of Israel to the new prophet. Who is the only prophet you know who is not one of the children of Israel? Yes, Muhammad is the only one. And Shiloh means the peace bringer. Psalm 84, 4-6 Blessed are those who dwell in your house, they are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Bakka, they make it a place of springs. This verse is referring to believers doing pilgrimage to the valley of Bakka. Bakka is the older name of Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Check out this verse from Quran referring to Mecca as Bakka. <laughs> The first house of worship appointed for men was that at Bakka, full of blessing and of guidance for all kinds of beings. Even the word Muhammad itself is in the Bible. Check out the Song of Solomon. It's written like this, Muhammadim, which means the great Muhammad. Like for example in Hebrew you say Elohim, which means the great God. Eloh is God, Elohim is the great God. But when they translated it to English, they tried to hide the name Muhammad from you, so they translated the name into all lovely, which is correct, this is the translation of the name. But you don't translate people's name. For example, if someone is called Mr. Black, can you imagine what will happen if you translate his name to another language? No, in another language his name will still be Mr. Black. So you don't translate the word Muhammad to all together lovely, you change the name. The name is written in the original Hebrew version, Muhammadim, the great Muhammad. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. Yes, the name Muhammad does show up. It does say Muhammadim, but the name Muhammad is very plainly in the text. <laughs> Isaiah 29.12 And when they give the book to the one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read. This verse is saying that God's book will be given to a prophet who cannot read, referring to Muhammad, he is the only illiterate prophet. 
and this is literally the first verse revealed to Muhammad in the Quran. Iqra, read. Read, O Prophet, in the name of your Lord who created. And in Muhammad's narration, when the spirit angel Gabriel first talked to him, he said, Iqra, read, three times. And he responded, Ma ana biqari, I cannot read. John 1, 20 and 21, they were asking John the Baptist, Are you the Messiah? He said, I am not the Messiah. Then they asked him, Are you Elia? He said, No, I am not Elia. Then they asked him, Are you the prophet? He said, No, I am not the prophet. They are clearly waiting for three personalities, the Messiah, the Elia, the prophet. Now read this one with me. Matthew 11, 12 and 14. From the days of John the Baptist until now, fast forward, and if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elia who was to come. So Jesus clarified that he is the Messiah and John the Baptist is the Elia. That leaves us with the last expected prophet they were waiting for, which of course no other than Muhammad. Shalom Mishpacha, my name is Rabbi Mort and the video is going to be called Prophecies of Muhammad, the Ishmaelite prophet in the Bible and the scriptures. We'll start out with a quick prayer. Aromimcha Hashem, Ki Deltani, Shalom Yerushalam. We start out with Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verse 2. Hashem came from Sinai and rose up from Sayer unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came forth with thousands of his saints. The simple explanation in here is that the mentioning of Mount Paran, Mount Paran, is the Mount of Ishmael, which may refer to also Muhammad. In Isaiah 60, 1 through 7, a prophecy about a prophet bringing a light of Hashem to the world. This holy prophet or holy man would appear in a time of darkness, filling the world and covering the earth. He would appear to eliminate the darkness and spread the light of Hashem and his praises. In Isaiah 60, verse 7, we know plainly as about Kadar, where its flocks and tribes would be gathered together. We go to also book of Jasher, Hayashar, chapter 25, verse 16, which is also found in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 25, verse 13, also 1 Chronicles 1, 29, and it says, And Riba bear unto Ishmael, Nabioth, Kadar, and Abdil, and so on. All the flocks of Kedar is referring to tribes of Ishmael, which may refer to also Muhammad. I also discovered in Isaiah, Ishiyahu, chapter 60, verse 7, All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee, rams of Nabioth shall minister unto thee, they shall come up with acceptance of Hashem's altar, and he will glorify the house of, of his glory. When he says, and I will glorify the house of my glory, it's referring to, it could only be Kaaba. In Mecca, the sacred house the, for the glory of Elohim that Avraham built with Ishmael. We also discussed uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. Yes, the name Muhammad does show up. It does say Muhammadim, but the name Muhammad is very plainly in the text. I finish this with Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. I am black but calmly, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kadar, as the curtains of Solomon. Shalom. So I, as a rabbi, view Muhammad as one of the greatest prophets to the Gentiles. So I, as a rabbi, view Muhammad as one of the greatest prophets to the Gentiles.